The next husbandry procedure is a somewhat controversial one, nose ringing. I'll break down the pros and cons to help you decide and give you some alternatives if you'd like as well. So why do you put a nose ring in your pig? Well, if they're outdoor pigs, people are trying to spare their paddocks from being demolished. If they're indoor pet pigs, then their rooting behavior can lead to a lot of damage to carpet, lino, other household belongings. We don't have a lot of indoor pet pigs in New Zealand. Overseas, it's a real thing. It might seem really common here in New Zealand to put rings in their nose, but it is considered a painful procedure in the eyes of the legal welfare code. And as an owner, the code says that we are obliged to strongly consider alternatives before ringing. So it's definitely um, a discussion, okay? It's not a go-to. You need to really have a think, is this right for you and your pigs? Studies have shown pigs will naturally spend about 20% of their time rooting with their noses, anywhere from 10 to 50% really, um, and foraging what they can find. And this can vary, some a little more, some less, depending on the individual and the breed. They have different drives to dig. So we know that this is a key behavior for pigs. They root for roots and grubs, and also for those essential minerals found in the soil. It is not, however, a learned behavior. It is an ingrained behavior that they are born with. If they are prevented from rooting and foraging, they may redirect this behavioral need into other OCD type behaviors as an outlet. In the farming industry, a lack of rooting and foraging has been shown to be linked to tail biting and mutilation, for example. So how to enrich the lives of those pigs and prevent social mutilation is always a topic of discussion to improve their welfare in the farms. The big pro is obviously maintaining nice pasture. The big con is their welfare. Preventing this natural behavior as well as the physical side of it, you know, the snout is a very sensitive area of the body. It's akin to us using our hands. And the way that nose ringing works is to cause pain in the snout or as it heals over time, at least discomfort when it's used. So we hope that it's not gonna stay as a severely painful thing over time, but the best we can hope for is that it's uncomfortable and causes them discomfort when they try and use it. In saying that, they can be very slow to heal and can get infected as well, in which point we will sometimes need to go back and take them out because it is a real long-term physical suffering. So if you do choose to nose ring, you need to be prepared that they will wake up in pain. Sometimes it's hard to watch if you're unprepared for that. They may get infected and sometimes persistently infected. They may grow out of them and need to be redone again at least once. They very, very often fall out or rip out and need to be replaced, and you should take that as a given. And finally, they're not guaranteed to work. Over the years, I've met many, many clients who used to ring and have now stopped because they just said it wasn't worth it, it was expensive, they fell out, they didn't like to see their pigs in pain when it was done, and it didn't even work. Lots of people end up putting more and more rings and trying really hard to curb this behavior. Um, and the, the drive for the pig is so strong that they just push through. All right, you can probably tell how I sit, <laughs> which side of the fence I sit in. It's just because I've seen so many owners over the years get really fed up with the limitations and eventually think, what was all of that for? Could have saved myself a ton of money, the pigs are more fulfilled and pain-free life, and just create a pig-safe enclosure from the get-go. So I would encourage you to at least explore the alternatives before jumping to nose ringing. I think the easiest alternative is just to have a pig specific area, a paddock, a big pen, where they're allowed to do their thing. Pigs would way rather wallow in mud or fresh water and root up branches, hay and peat, Peter's decaying vegetation, over your pasture any day. You can do this for them. Just keep topping it up. Bring in hay, bring in branches. Some people will keep pigs in a pig specific enclosure and just bring them out from time to time to turn over the garden. So they're a real thing in permaculture circles. Put them to work, they'll love you for it. You can keep them in with a really low tight electric wire so you can actually contain pigs pretty easily. If you want them out in the paddocks, then make sure they've got plenty of space, spread hay, peat and branches in one corner of the paddock that you're happy for them to root in and scatter their pellets and scraps there as well. You can even dig it into the hay deliberately and that slows them down. It means they'll have to work for it and they're gonna spend heaps of time being preoccupied there for hours. If you do choose to ring, you'll have to decide where you wanna put the rings. If you have a short-nosed breed, like a cooney, the septum, this part here in the middle, that's not an option for you, it's dangerous. It can include their breathing. They're already struggling with their little stubby snouts. 
The septum doesn't work very well either because the nose actually moves from the top, from the disc at the top when they're rooting like a shovel. The septum itself doesn't really move that much, so it's, it's much less effective. The alternative to the septum is up the top, disc staples or disc rings. These ones can fall out or tear out much faster and easier than a septum ring. So you do have to just pick your poison really, you know, the, the benefit of a septum ring is that it doesn't fall out very easily, but I rarely see people with one septum ring where it's working. They usually have a septum ring and then end up putting in the disc rings anyway, so it doesn't do that much. Legally, wire is not a thing. Home jobs are not a thing that's illegal to do it at home with wire. It it's really is illegal. It needs to be done by a trained person who can give pain relief. In the lifestyle block sector, that is your vet, and usually under sedation. 